Hi, we're back on Photo Booth. I enjoyed um, filming in this way so much in the last video that I posted. So I think I'm going to try to do it more. I don't know about daily. I don't know. I'm one of those people that really, as soon as I like something, maybe it's the Aries part of me or like I want to make everything I do a business or I want to make everything I do um, like really consistent or I want it to be like my next project. Like I've always been like that um, since I'm a kid, like just like starting a lot of projects and actually I have, I have a hard time finishing things and I have a really easy time like taking initiative and starting a lot of things. And then <clears throat> I have a hard time to see things through. Um, so maybe it's just that impulse of mine that I'm like, oh, I just want to like, now I want to do this every day and I want to, um, it's going to be daily and it's going to be um, on my Patreon or whatever. I don't know. Like I have all these ideas from one just enjoyable, nice, casual moment on my MacBook photo booth. Um, but anyway, I also thank you so much if you, um, uh, what's it called? Um, left a comment on the last video that you enjoyed this kind of like casual, more like conversational sort of mood. Um, so I'm into it. I'm totally into it for me. Actually, like what I enjoy about YouTube is that it gives me something creative to do. Um, and also like the, the aspiring like actor in me likes to be filmed, I must say. Um, like, let's not hide it that I like, I like the camera. I like something about the camera very much. I don't actually like speaking, um, like on stage, for example. I, actually, it reminds me that I was sending messages to Sophie from Biblio Sophie. She's also a performer. And she posted something about her vlog saying like, fundamentally, I like a journal with an audience. This is actually a very um, stress-free, um, more like accessible way of using this platform right now for me, like to go kind of like what feels to me like old school. I don't know if I mentioned in the last video, but like I had a YouTube channel when I was like 12 or something. And yeah, I didn't have a camera at first, so I used the webcam on the, on the computer. That's what it reminds me of. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, I was excited to, to film this and then I've been feeling all day this really like uh, weird pain in my left eye that I'm, when I look that way, I get like a really strong pressure, like, like a pain, but like a pressure in the eye. Um, I should probably stop checking it. And I think that I, it's a migraine. I think that I'm like, um, developing a migraine or I have like a, a kind of a mild one. Um, it's not something that I have very often, but it, I have had them before in the past. Um, actually this past month when I was working in France, I, um, did have a, a few of them and they were pretty, they put me out. Um, so I hope that this one doesn't, um, go there, but, um, yeah, I do kind of have like a sort of, yeah, my, my grain type sensation in my head right now. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about, um, in the last video, I was speaking about Deborah Levy's, um, new book called The Position of Spoons and Other Intimacies. So I need to dig that out of my bag. Um, and I got this as an arc from FSG, like I mentioned, and I'm loving it. I'm well, I love Deborah Levy. This is no, this is absolutely no news to anyone unless you're um, landing on this video for the first time. Um, then everything is news to you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, but I, I love Deborah Levy's um, nonfiction, like her series of her autobiography, living autobiography series. I enjoyed so much. Um, her fiction, less. Like I enjoyed Swimming Home a lot and I um I read August Blue it didn't blow me away um and I actually
actually haven't read Hot Milk or The Man Who Saw Everything. And this is also not uh, fiction. Well, actually, some of them... Some of them are. I guess it's like many, many pieces of either like essays or reflections on, um, well, it's called like the position of spoons and other intimacies. So I feel like it's little intimate looks at a variety of subjects. So that can be another author that she takes like an intimate look at um, or reflects on them or reflects on a work of theirs or um, works of art or um, on just various subjects like driving. Um, yeah, so although it does have quite a lot of references to like, um, at least so far, like other authors um, and other, you know, figures in literature, her being a writer, so that makes sense. Um, but I'm, they're very short vignettes. Like some of them are like three pages. Some are maybe like the longer ones are like eight or nine pages, but very short bites. Um, and some, when I say are fictional, like there are some prose pieces that are like inspired by, like it'll say, um, it'll be a, t a title and then it'll be like inspired by this artist. Um, and it, I have a lot of, I love Googling, um, Things from books, like especially when they're um, artists, um, feminist artists, especially or queer artists that I don't know. So it's very nice for me, like when, um, as long as something doesn't feel too name droppy, which this doesn't. It feels like just like each piece is um, dedicated to something or someone. Um, so that for me is very fun because there are many people that I know, but many people that I don't. And then I get to discover like new authors that I want to read. Um, Claire Louise Bennett's always great for this. Amina Kane's always great for this. Like I love uh, books that are full of other, you know, references. Um, so yeah, I've just really enjoyed it. There's been um, like a piece. Hi. It's the year of alphabeticals because, as we know, Sheila Hetty um, came out with her alphabetical diaries. And so far, and I'm 50% through this book, there's two pieces in here that are in alphabet by alphabet, alphabetical order. Um, and one of them is A to Z of the Death Drive. And she's talking about... Um, like different celebrities that have died in car accidents and like making observations on that and observations on death drive and like humans um, desiring on or being excited by and fearful of course um, on different scales of death um, and like automobiles and so that was like sectioned by alphabet and then Another one was called A Roaming Alphabet for the Inner Voice. And it's like A is for actor, B is for blush, C is for chronology, D is for desire, E is for eczema, F is for forgery. Um, so, and then she's just writing like little pieces. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Like 2024, it's the year of alphabeticals. Uh, and I'm into it. I like it a lot. Um, there was an essay about Anne Quinn, who is a really interesting author that I started reading a book of hers and then it was due back to the library and I didn't get to finish it because it was quite um, strange in a way that like requires you to think quite a lot. And I think I was just not in the right place, but definitely fascinating. Um, what were some other ones that I liked so far? Yeah, the, the the death drive one was super interesting. Also, I didn't know this author, Violette Leduc. Um, her autobiography called The Bastard, and then she has like other works of fiction. And um, Deborah Levy like uses quite a lot of quotes of hers in that, and like the quotes were so beautiful. So I'm really excited to um, to research her and and maybe read some of her work quote from um the death drive one 
that said to experience trauma is to have knowledge we do not want. When we repeat the details of a crash and say out loud what happened, we feel we have no more control over this unwelcome knowledge. Oh, sorry. Let me start again. To experience trauma is to have knowledge we do not want. When we repeat the details of a crash and say out loud what happened, we feel we have more control over this unwelcome knowledge. It is well known that if an airplane crashes, investigators search for the cockpit voice recorder, also known as the black box, to reveal details of the events preceding the accident. When we repeat our memories of a crash, either experienced or witnessed, we are the black box. I've been really enjoying reading this because um, after coming out of um, Elizabeth Strout's novel that I spoke about last video in the last video, I didn't want like immediately like another novel. Um, and this has been a really great like transition because it's something completely different, but like really short bites. Um, and I, I could be done with this by tonight if I like sat for a few hours and read the rest of it. So it's really easy. It's really fast. There's obviously like beautiful um, writing and Deborah Levy so makes such like astute observations about life and art and um, I am just yeah I'm a fan and I lo I'll, like I really love her mind and the way that she describes things and um, yeah how she connects many subjects to like the experience of living and being a, a person that lives <laughs> um, so and thinks so that's really great the position of spoons um most people from my last video said that they had not they were not aware that she's coming out with this book um and neither was i so i guess it's like sliding in under the radar um but i'm enjoying it so i've been reading it a little bit on the train uh when i've been going into the city i what else can i update you with i um Oh, I went to a fitting for a film that I'm going to participate in um, at the beginning of May that's shooting in New York, and I was told that I'm going to have to cut all my hair off. So that has been something that I'm processing. Um, I've had long hair probably like my whole, the whole as long as I remember myself, I have long hair. I mean, of course, there are pictures of me with, like, a very short hair, um, but I'm very young. Like, I feel like I already started growing out my hair, you know, middle school. So, uh, like, being 28, I do not have a memory of looking at myself in the mirror and having short hair. Um, and I've always, like, felt really feminine, with long hair and, that, and that's been something that was really important for me or just like something that felt very close to me um and I had been like toying with the idea of, of cutting my hair and going really short back and forth back and forth back and forth and now it's gonna happen because of this um film and I'm all of a sudden super conflicted about it because in a way it's like being decided for me <clears throat> which maybe on the one hand is like a nice, um, it's like a sign, like maybe this is the time that I just like give in and also have like a good haircut, I'm sure. Um, but on the other hand, I'm like, I feel like I should choose to do it and not like have it chosen for me. Um, but anyway, so that's just something I'm processing. Um, because I love my hair. I mean, I struggle with my hair for sure. Um, anyone who, well, I mean, probably people with thick pin straight hair also struggle in some ways, but if you have like curly hair or any kind of unruly type of hair, and I know that in, um, I'm like not even on a far spectrum of hair that takes a lot of maintenance, but, um, I do struggle with, I have always struggled as well with like my hair and always wanting it to be something that it's not, right? We always want, like, if you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you want straight hair, you want curly hair. Um, and yeah, so anyway, um, probably by the beginning of May, 
Um, oh my god, I won't have hair. That's really weird. So I'm, yeah, I'm processing that. Uh, what else can I share? Oh, Ohad and I are going on um, an artist residency in upstate New York. That's this weekend. It's also Ohad's birthday. So we're like combining, kind of, it's going to be kind of like a um, nice birthday trip because the art residency is in like a cultural center um, and it's in nature. Like you stay in like these kind of cabins and it's quite remote. I mean, you can, there is a small town there that you can walk around. You're not fully removed, but um, it's supposed to be very, very beautiful and a lot of greenery and the studios are quite big and um, yeah, so we're going there for a few days this weekend um, to do some research together and Ohad will turn 26. Jacob, Jacob. My dog wants to go out. We actually pertaining to that, we like drove around today to Joanne's and um, like a craft, another craft store, a party city. Jacob, one second. Jacob, like looking for crafty things to, um, yeah, to build some costumes and stuff that we want to bring a few prototypes of things to the art residency because um, it's always, we're, I don't know, performers that like to have like things with us when we're researching something new. We're watching American Horror Story Delicate with, um, Kim Kardashian, absolutely loving it. And there's a new um, episode coming out tonight. We've been waiting for that. Um, I feel like it has like recalibrated my, like I have a new obsession with Kim Kardashian from this show. <laughs> like I never really wanted to watch the Kardashians before. And now I want to watch the Kardashians because she's so good in this show. Um, and we also started watching The Regime with Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet is incredible. Do you hear this dog? Tell me you hear this dog. Jacob, please, you just went out. Give me a little bit longer. I don't know what my next read is going to be after this. Um, I have an arc for Rachel Cusk's new book, Parade. And I started reading it, and I was like, it seemed particularly difficult um, and confusing. And I was like, okay. Um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to be in the right kind of space for that one. Um, so I don't know if that'll be the next read, but yeah, I, I assume I'm gonna finish that soon, so. Wow, my, my eye. All right, I think I need to go. My eye is really, the migraine is, um, I'm afraid is creeping in on me. I wanted to have a glass of red wine tonight. That probably is not a good idea. Um, I meant to read more quotes to you from this book. Um, and so, I, well, at least read you one more. Um, this is from something called, uh, one of the pieces called A Mouthful of Grey. Um, and it's, she's speaking about standing in the center of Russell Square Gardens in London. And she says this, A civic garden square gentles the pace of the city that surrounds it, holding a thought before it scrambles. Its punctuation is a pause in the life of the city, a place where the beginnings of a latent latent nervous breakdown can express itself and God can be glimpsed inside the body of a London pigeon. <laughs> and I really liked that a lot. Um, let's see what else I can find quickly. Mm. She quotes a lot of other people, so I don't want to, um, I want to be sure who I'm quoting. <laughs> that was definitely hers, what I just wrote, wrote, read to you. This is pretty. From a um, piece called Distances. It is in my mind to tell you that my daughter's eyes look like oil wells lit at night. 
It's really beautiful. This is the earth we share and talk about in strange ways. I transmit these thoughts to you from the marshes and silent canals of Hackney, East London, to the curved bay of Spain, and on and under, and it is in my mind to tell you that all thoughts can be bent like a spoon. And I have a feeling like thoughts can be bent like a spoon refers to the title, the position of spoons. Maybe thinking about if the mind can bend like a spoon, then maybe the position of spoons sort of refers to the um, organization of thoughts in the brain, but there is a, um, a piece in here that's called the position of spoons. So I will know more about that maybe when I read that, when I get to that one. Okay. Um, that's it. I'm going to close my eyes for a bit. I think, let me know what you're reading. Um, yeah. And I don't know, I guess I'll just try to keep doing this and see what comes out of it. Um, maybe something interesting. I don't know. Okay. Just a journal with an audience. Bye.